Hi, everybody. It's Tyler here at Vex Rules. Check in. Once again, legendary 1010W 10 ton robotics. An incredible tier three hang that they got here at Vex Rules. We're so excited to talk more about what they have going on for that. But a lot of great stuff that's gone into this robot. They'll be breaking down here. Some other cool stuff I really want to hear uh, that, we'll, that they'll be talking about is going to be in regards to their mat strategy uh, and actually how they put together their awesome reveal video that they had as well, too. I'd love to dive more into that. So let's learn more about 10 ton this year here in High Stakes on Fits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Well, we got Kobe and Sean here to talk more about the robot here. So, guys, why don't you uh, listen to what you do on the team, and we got to dive right into that Tier 3 climb that you have. It's so awesome. Yeah, for sure. So, my name's Kobe, and I'm the programmer, builder, and designer for the team. And my name is Sean, and I'm the builder, driver, and designer of the team. So, talk to me about this Tier 3 climb. What's gone into it? I mean, when we were talking earlier, it's essentially a, a meta-type robot that you've just been able to put a Tier 3 on. I really love to dive more into that, how you're able to package all that together and get it ready here for Vex Worlds. Yeah, so the biggest thing for a robot, like you said before, is keeping it as like a meta robot so we can intake, clamp goals, and score on the neutral stick effectively, just like a normal robot could, except we also have the option to go to tier three, which eliminates the small point differences between matches and gives us a big competitive edge in the long run. And we can elaborate later on how we really just integrated everything from the tier three into what's already on the robot and kind of improved our last robot by adding a tier three onto it. So on this here, uh, when you're talking, this robot's only 13 pounds, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. So how were you able to just get weight down so much, yet still be able to do a tier three climb? Yeah, for sure. So weight was a big priority when doing tier three. It's what really helps separate your robot and keep it the exact same from what it was before. So it allowed us to seamlessly integrate the tier three. So here you can see we use a lot of Dalrin pieces. Um, a lot of our pieces for the hang are made out of Dalrin, like the hooks right here and the passive hooks on the back, which we'll talk about. Um, these hooks really help reduce the weight. Many teams use high strength shafts, other different mechanisms to hold their robot up and keep it up stronger. Um, we've also used C channels here instead of L channels. Uh, it's a sacrifice we decided to make. Um, it increases the weight, but it, it, um, it allows it to be stronger and decrease the twist. On our robot here, you can see that our drive is also lightweight. It's a five wide drive and it allows us to be really compact. Everything on the robot super compact and put together. Yeah, and I think Kobe can talk about more about the piston tower. Yeah, so I think that what you guys might notice here is that our robot actually has a moving Lady Brown tower. And how that kind of works is there's a slider here. So what this kind of does is limits the back movement so we're not out of size. And then this limits the front movement here so the robot's always in the, um, the neutral scoring mode. And we can give you a demo how that works. Uh, yeah, like that. So the Lady Brown comes up and then this gets pushed back down. And we're now able to climb onto the bars. And a lot of things, uh, a lot of teams, what they wonder about is how we stop it from double expanding out the back. So in the intake here, there's a little uh, zip tie here. And what this kind of does is when it's pushing the intake like this, we're able to start at 18 inches in the back, starting from here instead. So that later when the intake comes down like this, we're able to go full 360 forward. And then this would be able to count backwards again. We're able to extend back out the robot again, just making sure that the slider is in place to limit the backwards expansion all the way. And we find that a very effective way to clamp onto the bars and clamp onto the next tier of the ladder. One of the yeah. other teams that we talked to, by the way, that has been very effective at uh, Tier 3 Climbs is Gremlin as well, but they're very pneumatic heavy on that, and you guys are using a lot of mechanical features on it. What, can you talk to me about some of that decision to go mechanical more than like a pneumatic route? For sure. Um, we use a lot of different mechanical mechanisms. So one thing we use is the Lady Brown here. This is a 11 watt motor combined, and by pulling this down, we're able to use the power of seven motors to lift up our drive. And by doing this, we have a PTO mechanism down here. So you can see it's powered by one piston, one small VEX piston, and it simply moves the 24 tooth gear into the other 24 tooth gear inside the base. And this helps keep the PTO super compact and it runs at 600 RPM. Um, the reason we went for a 600 RPM PTO is because it optimizes the speed and the consistency of the hang, and we're able to get it off almost every match when we want to. Uh, we haven't had a match where the tier three's fallen or the tier three hasn't worked yet. Yeah, so far we've hit tier three, I think five times out of six matches and one skills run. So, yeah. 
When you were coming into Vex Rolls here, can you just break down some of the goals that you wanted to accomplish with this robot going yeah. in? I mean, obviously T3 is a big thing, but anything else that you guys were approaching? Yeah, so we went to a few SIGs this season, and we also had our provincial championship, and we went to a lot of scrimmages too. And we noticed that no matter what, the robots are so similar together that even if you have better programming and driving, there's still a high chance that the match is very close, or a better team will lose to a worse team, and things like that. So we just looked around the field, uh, looked at other ways we can score points on the field and noticed that the climb ladder is such a big element that no one's using on the field and the amount of points it can score especially with that big uh, high stake ring uh, it can score up to 25 points 20 points if you're climbing by yourself and we think it's a very big point difference and definitely very worth it so what we've kind of been doing is hanging really early onto that high stake post and making sure we get that post and get the top ring because no matter what even if we hang in 40 seconds uh, we'll never score more than 25 points in the last 40 seconds no matter what we do Looking at uh, just some other attributes here about some other things that, uh, you know, it's cool to focus on here. I'm going to kind of just let you guys go. What are some other maybe additions oh, yeah. you made or changes you made that you want to highlight? Yeah, so one thing you might notice on the back of the robot here is this completely uh, custom darren structure. So these are what we call the passive hooks. So the first priority of the passive hooks is when we're intaking onto the goal, they push the six ring away from the hooks. So we're able to still spin the intake while we have a full mobile goal, which allows us to use a neutral stake scoring algorithm to still load rings into it and score onto the neutral stakes. And the next priority for this is actually for the tier three. So as you guys notice here, um, when the tower pistons back, like that, we're able to switch it. And then when we clap down and pull down onto the bar, when the bar is down here, if we go this way, it actually pulls the bar back under here and these are able to land onto the post. And then we're able to do that again and again to go from tier one to tier three. And then at the end, we're able to spin the intake and load onto the um, high stake ring. Uh, I can also talk about these um, sliders in the back here. So these sliders help keep the tower away from the robot as we're hanging up. It helps us clear the back of the bar as we're going up the ladder. So here you can see it's a bent piece of Dalrin. Um, this allows for a smooth transition from stage to stage and it increases the consistency of our overall robot. So something you might notice is the whole robot, we're aimed for consistency. Consistency is something we've noticed is super important at Vex Worlds. We want to be able to win even when the scenarios are low. So for example, if you lost the third goal, if you didn't get the autonomous bonus, or even if you didn't get any neutral stakes, we realized that with the tier three and the top ring, it gives you a chance to win the match. Yeah, and just talking more about that consistency, it's actually why we chose to run a 600 RPM winch instead of a 900 RPM winch, as we never want the PTO to overheat and the winch to not fire properly. So just by having a slower hang, we're able to make it more consistent, as we are planning to hang in the last 40 to 30 seconds anyways, so may as well make it more consistent and just be a little slower. One other thing you might notice on our tier three is our string management. So string management is something that was really important for us. Uh, it helps the robot stay exactly like before and the tier three to be in place. So you can see the string here. These, there's these clips on the side. These clips help hold the string in during the match before we go to tier three. So these strings are tightly um, close to the C channel. And when the tier three starts winching down, the clips simply come off and we're able to go to tier three. I think that was pretty special about this robot that was really hard for us to do. Uh, we actually went through three different tier three designs for this reason, is actually fixing the expansion rules and the sizing limit rules. So the first problem we had was that the intake was sticking super far out, so we weren't able to expand far enough backwards out to count within that 18. And then we had to kind of remodel the intake and remodel the tier three, so we could expand less out the back and the front, which uh, really helped make this tier three possible uh, at the World Championship. Looking at some other things uh, on your robot, is there any other major changes that your team made coming in here or coming from like your last SIG or from Provincials into this event? Yeah, for sure. One of the major changes we made was for our back clamp mechanism. So the back clamp is something that's super important for this game. Many teams run the tipper design to try and steal a goal from the back clamp. So you can see our pistons are nearly vertical on the back clamp. This helps hold the goal in place, almost like a locking clamp. And it's really strong. We ran it in a bunch of scrimmages and we actually haven't gotten stolen from yet change is actually the way we cover our intake. So if you look at the front of the robot here, you see this kind of V-shape here, and it's a perfect distance away for these hooks to just slip through. As at the uh, Provincial Championship, sometimes we'd have problems with the ring falling out of the front of the intake, or just having those straight lines up, the ring can get stuck on them, and there's no possible way to get them out, which means that you can only intake one ring at a time for the rest of the match. So by having this shape here, the rings aren't able to land here, instead they'll just slide off, and then the hooks are able to efficiently grab the ring right through the middle of that. One thing's uh, looking at, you know, just recently, you all make some incredible reveal videos and show oh, yeah, your robot you. on that. And can you just talk to me a bit more, kind of what goes into them, some of the process behind it, and maybe what other teams who maybe want to elevate their game a little bit, yeah. maybe some advice for them too would be great. Yeah, so we actually film our reveals in my garage. And what we do is we get a bunch of studio lights and then we get a big black backdrop. And then we just set up the robot in there and then set up all the lighting and take like a bunch of shots. So we'll spend an entire day just taking shots. And then together at night, we'll spend an entire day uh, at night and the next day 
uh, editing the reveal together and just coming up with a product that we both enjoy watching and we think other people enjoy watching too. I think one of the things a lot of people don't realize in the editing process is just how long it takes. Like when you make a video that's only a few minutes long, it's pretty much like a minute is like several hours in many circumstances. So a lot of yeah. patience that goes into that, right? Is there uh, anything else like when you guys create, like what program do you use to edit, that sort of thing? Yeah, for sure. So for editing, we use DaVinci Resolve and we've been using this for the last three years. We've been making reveals and we all we we always film and edit together and that's how we make reveals so fast. It's a free program too, right? Yeah, DaVinci for, sure, for a lot, so a great one for people to pick up and utilize. It's actually used in professional industry a lot too, which is awesome. Uh, speaking about working as a team, can you just talk a little bit more how you two work together, how, you're, how the team all comes together for this whole process? Yeah, for sure. So it's actually been six years since me and Kobe joined a team together. Um, we've been on the same team for six years. It's just been us and we've really worked, learned how to work together well as a team. Um, we've been able to be pretty successful in robotics. This is actually our last competition ever, and we're really excited to put it all out there, put it all on the stage, and hopefully do well at this World Championships. Well, as you're filming this, you're doing incredible so far, so we wish you best of luck for that. Hopefully thank a you. dome appearance as well too, but one step at a time, I know, as we go through this, but 10 ton, thank you so much once again. Great inspiration to the community, and congratulations on six fantastic years together. I really thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.